Welcome to the Adapterama 3 video series on 3RAD. In this video, we explain how Adapterama has been crafted to produce high quality RADSeq data and provide flexible barcoding to meet many experimental design needs. In population genomics, the general goal of most projects involving next generation sequencing is to be able to compare DNA sequences of multiple individuals so that we can understand evolutionary processes of interest. With the availability of full genome sequencing, it is now possible to compare the complete genome sequences of organisms. The downside is that whole genome sequencing is still relatively expensive and time-consuming, especially for organisms with genome sizes typically found in most vertebrates and many plants. The alternative approach is to sample a smaller, repeatable fraction of the genome. Obtaining a consistent portion of the genome from multiple individuals allows the focal loci to be sequenced to a high depth and thus yielding high confidence in the results while simultaneously reducing overall costs. There are many different flavors of reduced representation libraries, but many make use of restriction enzymes. Restriction site-associated DNA sequencing, known as RADSeq, uses one or more restriction enzymes to digest the genome and prepare a repeatable fraction for next-generation sequencing. Genotype by sequencing, or GBS, also uses restriction enzymes, but differs from RADSeq in several details that we will not cover here. In our approach, we use restriction enzymes that produce two different cohesive ends. This approach is similar in spirit to the dual digest RADSeq method of Peterson et al., but differs in a variety of technical details to improve efficiency and flexibility while simultaneously reducing the cost of library construction. We call our method 3RAD because it uses three restriction enzymes. In the current version of 3RAD, we are only considering making DNA libraries that can be sequenced on Illumina instruments. With so many options available, why do we need another variant of RADSeq or GBS? First, 3RAD is very simple to do. It is faster, easier, cheaper, and more efficient than other existing methods. The primary way that 3RAD achieves these gains is to allow simultaneous digestions and ligation. The adapters are designed to produce the products we want, not adapter dimers. This means less input DNA is required, few reagents are needed, and we produce fewer unwanted chimeras. So far, we have made four adapter designs for each end, and most designs can be used with multiple enzymes, and in varying combinations. 3RAD also uses dual-indexed primers, which can be used combinatorially. Thus, huge numbers of samples can be processed, each with its own unique set of identifying sequence tags. Finally, the variable length tags used in the 3RAD adapters facilitates high-quality sequence reads from Illumina instruments. Let's see how 3RAD works. Let's consider DNA from our organism of interest shown in black. Restriction cut sites will be scattered across the genome, illustrated here with an enzyme cut site in red and an enzyme cut site in green. We are interested in fragments that happen to have cut sites for our two restriction enzymes relatively close together. In this case, the genomic DNA is cut into fragments with enzyme A and enzyme B. We then ligate two different adapters that each have a compatible cohesive end specific to the restriction enzymes used. Thus, only fragments with the two different cut sites will receive both kinds of adapters. These adapters will serve as primer binding sites for Illumina sequencing and the inner tagging sites for quadruple indexing. We will refer to these adapters as the Read1 and Read2 adapters. The Read1 adapter is made up of the Read1 sequencing primer binding site, an inner barcode called a tag, and the cut site including the compatible cohesive end. Similarly, the Read2 adapter is made up of the primer binding site for the other sequencing primer, another inner tag for combinatorial tagging, and the other cut site with the appropriate cohesive end. Importantly, with 3RAD, we will only make use of the bottom strand as illustrated next. As illustrated here, there are two properties that keep the top strand from being used as a template for 3RAD libraries. First, the top strand of the Read2 adapter is not ligated. Thus, when the fragments are denatured during PCR, they fall apart at this site. Second, the 3' prime end of the Read2 adapter upper strand ends with three bases that are not complementary to the bottom strand. This keeps these oligonucleotides from serving as unwanted primers during amplification of the 3RAD libraries. Now let's see how things work in PCR. 
Following ligation of the adapters to our organism's DNA, we can now begin PCR of the desired fragments. First, the double strand is denatured and the forward primer anneals to the read one sequencing primer binding site on the bottom strand of our construct. This i 5 primer is composed of the P5 primer that will attach to the surface of the alumina flow cells for cluster generation, an additional barcode known as the I5 index, and part of the read one sequencing primer. The I5 index is the alumina standard 8 nucleotide length, but comes from a much larger set than is used by alumina. Thus, many more combinations are possible. PCR can now proceed. The DNA polymerase extends from the I25 primer to complete the new top strand. During the next cycle of PCR, we'll follow the top strand. The bottom strand will repeat what we just did. We now incorporate the reverse primer that contains the P7 primer region for cluster generation, another barcode known as the I7 index, and part of the read 2 sequencing primer. This is the I27 primer. The I7 index is Illumina's original indexing position produced from indexing read 1. Now, let's extend from the I27 primer to complete our new lower strand. In the next cycle of PCR, again we will follow our new strand of DNA. When we do the third cycle of PCR, the I25 primer is used again. After extension, we now have a full 3-rad molecule that has four barcodes, also known as tags or indexes, and is compatible with standard TrueSeq sequencing primers on all Illumina platforms. In our 3-rad constructs, we have two inner tags and two outer indexes. This facilitates hierarchical combinatorial tagging of large numbers of individuals from a small number of oligonucleotides. Now let's take a closer look at how easily combinatorial tagging can happen at the lab bench using the read 1 and read 2 adapters, or the i 5 and i 7 primers. Here we present the method using a 96 well plate, the format we commonly use to prepare 3 rad libraries. For each plate, you will use 8 read 1 adapters that are all distinct from one another, represented by the different shapes on the vertical axis to the left of the plate, as well as 12 distinct read 2 adapters represented by different colors on the horizontal axis above the plate. Typically, we have the read 1 and read 2 adapters in strip tubes that are stored in a strip tube plate. After we have everything in place and prior to pipetting into the 96 well plate, be sure to mix the read 1 adapters well in the strip tube by pipetting up and down multiple times. Then we use a multi channel pipette to pipette read 1 adapters to each well of this 96 well plate. This requires pipetting 12 times. Now we are ready to repeat that process for the read 2 adapters. Use a 12 channel pipette to pipette the read 2 adapters into each well. Now we have unique combinations of read 1 and read 2 adapters in each well. Once the adapters are ligated onto the DNA, these adapters can be used as unique barcodes for each sample within a plate. Because each sample has been uniquely tagged, we can pool all samples together prior to PCR with the i 5 and i 7 primers. Alternatively, we can use unique combinations of i 5 and i 7 primers for each sample, thus each sample has redundant tagging to further guard against foul-ups in the lab or when processing of data. You have now reached part two of the 3RAD video series where we will discuss use of a third enzyme in a dual digest RAD-seq methodology. This third enzyme is why this protocol is called 3RAD. Using the third enzyme increases the efficiency of adapter ligation for our protocol. To understand how things work, we will need to go into much more detail than part one. Let's take a look. In this example, our two enzymes that were previously enzyme A and enzyme B are XBA1 and EcoR1. Just like before, our enzymes come in and cut the DNA into fragments with enzyme-specific overhangs. These two enzymes produce two DNA molecules, each with an overhang specific to that enzyme. In this case, the CTAG overhang is produced from XBA1 
and the AATT overhang is produced from EcoR1. We'll call these molecules A1 and A2 for XBA1 and B1 and B2 for EcoR1. The overhangs are the same for each enzyme but are in two orientations, one as a top strand overhang and the other as the bottom strand overhang. Let's take one orientation for each enzyme as an example. The read 1 and read 2 adapters are ligated onto each end. This example is showing the bases that we simply illustrated with colors previously. Of course, if you switch orientations by flipping the molecules over, you will still end up with the same construct, just upside down compared to how we showed it previously. Either way, you will get the correct adapter ligating to whichever end is compatible to the correct enzyme overhang. We have now shown what we want to occur, but in the real world, it's not quite that simple. So let's examine things in detail. Let's start by looking at what EcoR1 produced fragments can ligate to. Remember that all restriction enzymes leave phosphate groups on the 5' end of molecules they cut, and that ligation by T4 DNA ligase requires such phosphate groups. Synthetic DNA, such as primers or adapters, only have 5' phosphate groups if we pay extra to put them on there. Thus, adapters made from plain primers do not self-ligate. So when EcoR1 cuts genomic DNA from our organism, the B1 and B2 molecules are created. But, because they have compatible ends with 5' phosphates, they can ligate back together. In most RADseq or GBS protocols, this would be a problem, because we could ligate different pieces of genomic DNA together, forming chimeras. However, because we have the restriction enzymes active at the same time as ligation in the 3 rad protocol, we don't have to worry about these undesired ligation products. EcoR1 will continually recut them as they form. On the other hand, when the B1 or B2 fragments are ligated to the read 2 adapters, depicted as B' prime DNA fragments in pink, these cannot be recut because the B' prime adapters do not perfectly recreate the EcoR1 restriction site. Note that the overhang is identical, AATT, but we have substituted an AT base pair in the adapter for a GC base pair in the EcoR1 recognition site. Thus, these DNA adapter fusions do not have EcoR1 recognition sites. This is what we want to occur. Finally, the read 2 adapters cannot ligate to each other because the 5' A is not phosphorylated and thus T4 ligase cannot make a phosphodiester bond to ligate two read 2 adapters together. This means that we don't have to worry about adapter dimers lowering the efficiency of the ligation process for the read 2 side of the 3 rad molecule. Unfortunately, things are more complex on the read 1 side of the DNA molecule, which we will show next. As mentioned before, XBA produces the two fragments A1 and A2. Just like in EcoR1, any ligation of those compatible ends will be continuously recut by XBA1. Likewise, ligations of the A1 or A2 fragments to the read 1 adapters, depicted as A' prime in light blue, cannot be recut. These are the desired products, so we want this to occur. Unfortunately, because we need the read 1 adapters to ligate to the strands containing the read 2 adapters, the read 1 adapters must be phosphorylated. This means that the read 1 adapters do have the ability to ligate together. These adapter dimers cannot be cut by XBA1, resulting in a large loss of efficiency in RADseq. Such adapter dimer formation has been an unsolved problem in previously developed methods. The usual approach is to simply put a large excess of the read 1 adapters into the ligations, live with huge numbers of adapter dimers, and hope for the best. We can do the same, or we can add a third enzyme, capable of cutting the undesired read 1 adapter dimers, but not the desired product. Of course, the incorporation of a third enzyme does produce additional DNA fragments, C1 and C2 molecules, that can reanneal, but they are continuously recut. Similarly, any ligation of C1 or C2 to the read 1 adapter are also recut by the third enzyme. It is important to note, however, that there are undesired chimeric products formed between the A and C molecules that cannot be recut. 
These undesired products can and do occur, but they are at a low frequency in the final library because it is necessary to have correct read 1 and read 2 sites upstream and downstream from these chimeric sites, and we use an excess of adapters which favors the formation of correct products. 3RAD does not require the use of a third enzyme, but because adapter ligation is critical to efficient library preparations, it is generally a good trade-off to make. If you choose not to use the third enzyme, please be certain to use efficient methods to remove adapter dimers. We hope that this video has helped you understand the 3RAD method. Please read Adapterama 3 for additional details.